Hello everyone and welcome to my lesson on electrical energy and power. We're going to start off the lesson like normal with a quick quiz. So pause the video, have a go answering them and then check your answers on the next slide. The answer to question 10 will be on the next slide. These are the graphs you need to recognize from earlier in the unit. They're called IV curves because the I comes from the current and the V comes from the potential difference. You need to recognize the shape of all three graphs. The one on the top left this is my IV curve for a resistor. You can tell this is a resistor because it's a straight line and it passes through the origin. We call this an ohmic conductor. We call this one ohmic. An ohmic conductor. And that's because it obeys Ohm's law. And Ohm's law is that current is directly proportional to potential difference. So if it's a straight line through the origin, that is ohmic. The one on the top right, this is the IV curve for a bulb. And this one is non-ohmic. This is non-ohmic, non-ohmic. And that's because it does not obey Ohm's law, does not obey Ohm's law. Ohm's law is that current is directly proportional to potential difference. This one does not have a straight line, so therefore it does not obey Ohm's law. The one on the bottom right, this is the IV curve for a diode. And again, it does not have a straight line, so therefore this is non-ohmic. And that means it does not obey Ohm's law. It's a really, really important area of electricity to look at how energy is transferred. So this lesson is all going to be about how energy is transferred around a circuit. And then we're going to look at power. First thing I'd like to do is recap the model we looked at last lesson. So there are loads of different models. This is one that I used, um, and it was about some plates that were going round a conveyor belt, round and round and round in circles. And as the plates went through, we had some digestive biscuits up here, if I remember rightly. We had a packet of biscuits. And the plates picked up some biscuits, they carried on round the circuit, and then they passed through a little baby and the baby ate the biscuits and then the plates carried on empty and they carried on round until they picked up some more biscuits and this if you remember the model was exactly the same as how electricity works but in real life obviously it doesn't use biscuits and plates in real life these are electrons that move around the circuit delocalized electrons that move around the circuit and as they go through the cell up here, this is the cell at the top, as they go through the cell, they gain energy. So energy is transferred onto the electrons. And then the electrons travel round. And then down at the bottom here, as they go through the bulb, the electrons pass through the bulb. They lose their energy. Where does the energy go? The energy is given off as light and heat. Light and heat. And if the energy is given off as light and heat, then there's going to be no energy left on the on the electrons. That's why this plate over here is empty. So we could say that the energy is transferred from the electrons to the light bulb as light and heat. And at the top, we could say as it goes through the cell, as it goes through the cell, the energy is transferred to the electrons. 
So there are two parts to this diagram. At the bottom, the energy is transferred from the electrons to light and heat. And at the top, the energy is transferred from the cell to the electrons. And that's why the electrons after the cell have got more energy than the electrons before the cell. Now, one last thing that's really important, each plate doesn't represent one electron. Each plate in this model represents one coulomb of charge. Now that is billions and billions and billions of electrons all gathered. So you could actually think of it as this is one coulomb, this is one coulomb, this is one coulomb, this is one coulomb, and all of these coulombs are moving round the circuit. These are still one coulomb, one coulomb. Each one is a coulomb. And instead of saying each electron gains energy, I could say each coulomb of charge gains energy and then loses energy. Or a better way of putting it was that energy is transferred to one coulomb of charge. And then at the bottom, the energy is transferred from the coulomb of charge. The second model I'd like to have a look at is the one that involved a corridor. This green bit in the back is the corridor. We've got some year sevens and we've got some year nines. Or a year nine. The year nine has to run down the corridor and that's it. That's the model. So have a think. What does each part of this model represent? We've got the corridor, the year sevens and the year nine. The answer is the year corridor is the wire. So this is the wire. In the wire, you've got some objects lying around that aren't really moving. They are your positive metal ions. So your metal wire has got positive metal ions in it. And the year nine, this is your delocalized electron your electron that can move about in the wire. All metals have delocalized electrons. That's why they conduct electricity. And as your electron travels down the wire, it bumps, it bumps into your ion. And then it might bump into this ion and bump into this ion all the way down. It's gonna bump into your ions. And every time it bumps, just here, just here, every time it bumps, it loses a little bit of energy. And that's why we're talking about it now. So the electrons bump into the ions all the way down the wire. And every time they do bump, so just here, every time they collide and they collide here, they lose a little bit of energy. It's a bit like a little bit of friction. A bit like rubbing your hands together. There's a bit of energy lost every single time they bump. And that's why metal wires get hot. If you put your laptop on your knee, you'll feel it get hot. And that's because inside the delocalized electrons are bumping into the metal ions and losing a little bit of energy. And that energy is getting transferred as heat, which you can feel. Let's have a look now without any models. So we've used two models so we can picture it in our heads. Now I'm going to use just the scientific diagram and no models. So the first thing I'm going to talk about at the top is we're going to have our electrons passing through the cell. The coulomb of charge, I should say, travels round the circuit like this. And that coulomb of charge has energy. That coulomb of charge has energy. That coulomb of charge has energy. And when it passes through the resistor, so it's going to pass through the resistor, it's going to lose some of that energy. Where's the energy gone? Well, the energy has been transferred as heat. The resistor will start to get hot. 
it's still got a little bit of energy left. So when that coulomb passes through the light bulb, it's going to lose that last bit of energy as light and heat. And then the coulomb carries on round and back to pick up more energy. Or I should say, the energy is transferred onto the coulomb as it goes through the cell. So the coulomb travels down here, energy is transferred to the resistor as heat, energy is transferred to the bulb as light and heat, and then at the top, energy is transferred from the coulomb of uh, from the cell to the coulomb of charge, and that's why this coulomb of charge over here has energy and this one has not. As it passed through the cell, it gained energy or energy is transferred to the coulomb of charge. I just wanted to have a look at these two electrical appliances here. The first one on the right, let's do the right one first. Um, this is a TV that's plugged in to the mains. Um, if we think back to year nine energy transfers, we know that this starts off with electrical energy. And then it might get transferred as light. We know that because light comes out. Uh, it's also heat, it gets hot and sound. So light, heat and sound. The one on the left, the torch has a battery that's slightly different. We start off inside the battery and that starts off as chemical energy. And we transfer the chemical into electrical. And then we end up with electrical energy in the circuit, which gets transferred to light and heat. So mains starts off with electrical and transfers to light and heat and sound in this case. And inside a battery, we have chemical in the battery, which transfers to electrical first. And then the electrical in the circuit will transfer to light and heat when it comes out of the bulb. Pause the video and have a look at all of these different objects and try and talk about the energy transfer in each case. I'm going to talk about the blender first. If we have a look at the blender just here, the blender starts off with electrical energy and that energy gets transferred into kinetic because those blades will spin around kinetic energy plus sound to make a noise maybe a little bit of heat because it gets hot the hair straighteners they start off as electrical and they'll transfer to heat i don't think they make a sound i don't think they give off light they might have a tiny little light in it to show they're on um, but it's mainly just heat the TV we said was electrical, transfers to light plus heat plus sound. The hairdryer down the bottom, hairdryer. Uh, we'll start off with electrical there, and that will transfer into kinetic. There's a little fan that blows the air, so kinetic, plus sound, plus heat. There's a heating element that gets hot. And then there's a fan that blows around, so it's kinetic, heat and sound. The washing machine will start off with electrical and that will turn into uh, kinetic because the drum will spin. Thermal because the water gets hot. Sound because it makes noise. And maybe some light if it gives off light on the screen. Uh, what about the tram? tram so we start off with electrical you might be able to see the wires just up here so how it passes the electricity 
to the tram. And that will transfer to kinetic because the tram's moving. Kinetic plus sound. Maybe a bit of heat. Maybe some light. Giving off some light in there. Uh, the torch down the bottom. That's battery powered. So we start off with chemical to electrical. And then electrical to light plus heat. The earphones, we will start off with electrical and that will transfer to sound. Maybe a little bit of heat. A tiny bit. And the car. The car is quite tricky, I guess, because there's a battery in the car. It's actually an electric car. OK, electric car. So the electric car, we would store the energy as chemical in the battery. And then we would go chemical to electrical first. And then the electrical energy in the circuit will transfer to kinetic because it moves. Sound. Heat. There'll be some heat loss as the travels uh, around the wires. It might make some, uh, there might be some friction somewhere as the motor's turning. Uh, so we've got heat and sound, kinetic, maybe light as well because it gives off lights. Uh, it's got some lights at the front. Let's have a think about energy in terms of an equation. How would we write it down? The equations on the screen, energy is charge times potential difference. Now this equation makes so much sense. If you think about what each part is, then it's a really obvious thing to write down. It's a bit like saying, if each apple I bought, I went to the shop and bought some apples, each apple was 20p. If I bought three apples, then each one was 20p, it would be 20, 40, 60p. So that, that's the way the total would be. Well, potential difference here, Potential difference. A volt is a joule per coulomb, joules per coulomb. Energy per charge. Every coulomb has that much energy. If every one coulomb had two joules, then that would be two volts. There was two joules on each coulomb, that would be two volts. So the potential is the amount of energy per coulomb. And then you're timesing it by the total number of coulombs. So this is like the apples. It was 20p per apple times by three apples will give you 60p. In this way, it is, uh, let's do an example. Say it was, um, let's use this, the example on the screen. On this, there's one coulomb there. And there's one coulomb and one coulomb, one coulomb. So there's one coulomb, one coulomb, one coulomb. In total, there are six. One, two, three four five six coulombs so the total energy is going to be six coulombs now on each coulomb there is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven there's 12 biscuits or there's 12 joules per coulomb there's 12 joules on this one 12 joules on this one 12 joules on this one and 12 on this one and 12 on this one so how much energy is there in total well it's 12 per coulomb times that by six coulombs and that would give us 72 joules in total. So on here we've got 12 biscuits per plate or 12 joules per coulomb times that by six plates so there's total there's 72 biscuits or 72 joules of energy. If you want, you can pause the video, have a go at these equations, and then check with my answers afterwards. Once you've had a go and had a look at the way I lay out my answers, in the description below, there's a link to a worksheet. Um, the first three sections, section one, two, and three, are all questions about energy. There's loads of them. The answer at the bottom, 
have a look at my work and then have a go yourself. They start off easier and then get a bit harder and a bit harder. Try and do as many as you can. Check your answers to see if you work, if you're right. But the most important part is the layout. The way I lay this out is really, really important. So question number one. Question number one. A light bulb has a potential difference of 24 volts. So I'm going to start off writing 24 volts. A hundred coulombs of charge flows through it. So Q is a symbol for charge and it's a hundred coulombs. How much energy is transferred? So energy is question mark, draw a line. The equation we're going to use today is energy is Q times V, charge times potential difference. Now we put in the numbers we know. So energy is the charge. So looking over here, charge is 100. Times by the potential difference, which is 24. And use a calculator. The total energy is going to be that equation, use a calculator, and you end up with that many joules, 2,400 joules. So look back at the question. A light bulb has that voltage, 24 volts, 100 coulombs pass through it. That means there was 2,400 joules of energy that passed through that light bulb and was transferred to light and heat. Okay, question number two. A kettle has a thousand coulombs of charge. Q is the symbol for charge. One thousand coulombs. Is that the right unit? Yes. It has a potential difference of 2, uh, 240 volts. So potential difference is 240 volts how much energy is being transferred to the kettle? Question mark, draw a line. Three steps, write down the equation. E equals QV. Put in the numbers you know. So E is Q, which looking over here is a thousand, times by V, which is 240. And now the energy is just this equation. So it's a thousand times 240. You can use a calculator. So we could do 240 thousand joules. And that's the final answer. So that means for this kettle, 2,400 joules went into the kettle. And that energy was transferred to the water and the water got hot. Okay, question number three down here. Question number three. If a heater used 800 joules of energy, so the energy is 800 joules, is that the correct unit? Yes. How much charge? How much charge? Q is a symbol for charge. Flows through it when the potential difference is 40 volts. Potential difference is 40 volts. Draw a line. Same three steps. Write the equation out every time. Energy is QV, charge times potential difference. Now I know the energy. So instead of E, I'm going to write 800. And that is equal to Q. I don't know Q. Q is a question mark. So I'm going to leave that as Q times by V. My potential difference is 40 volts. Now, something times 40 is 800. So you might be able to work that one out. From here, you can just solve the equation. I'm going to divide this side by 40 to get rid of that 40. But I must also divide this side by 40 as well. So you can use a calculator. I'm going to do 800 divided by 40 which is 20. And this 40 is times 40 divided by 40. So this side is just Q. 
Q. And charge is measured in coulombs, so the total answer is 20 coulombs. And this also works out, if you think about it, 20 coulombs, each coulomb has got 40 on it, 40 joules on it. Sorry, 40, yeah, each one's got 40 joules on it. Therefore, the total energy is going to be 800 joules. If you want to think of it in biscuits, you could say there are 20 plates. Each plate has got 40 biscuits. Therefore, the total energy is 800 biscuits or 800 joules. Okay, last one. A power station produces 200 megajoules of energy. So energy is 200 megajoules. Now that is not the right units. Mega. Alarm bells should be ringing. Mega. Now mega means million. So therefore I'm straight away going to change the units here to 200 million joules of energy. Now we're in the right units. It's creating electricity at 25,000 volts. So my potential difference is 25,000 volts. How much charge Q is leaving the power station? Exactly the same start. Energy is QV. Now we put in the numbers we know, so 200 million is equal to 25,000 times by Q. Now to solve this, I want to, you can just look, solve this equation if you can. If not, this is times by 25,000 on this side. So I'm going to divide that side by 25,000 and divide this side by 25,000. So this side becomes times 25,000 divided by 25,000 and we end up with just Q, just charge. And this side I've got to do 200 million divided by 25,000. So we can use a calculator for that. 200 million divided by 25,000. So the answer is 8,000. Don't forget the units, coulombs, 8,000 coulombs. That's 8,000 coulombs of charge leave that power station. Okay, if you want to pause the video, you can leave my workings on the board. Have a look in the description. There'll be a link to a worksheet section one, two, and three. And you can have a look, check your answers at the bottom. They should be at the bottom. And if you've got any questions, let me know. The next part of the video I'm gonna look at is power. You've probably used the word, heard it before. Oh, that's really powerful. What does that mean? So in physics, power means energy per second. So let's think about a kettle to start with. Every single second that you turn that kettle on, you are transferring energy to the water. If you had a more powerful kettle, that would transfer more energy per second to that water. And if you're giving the water more energy every second, then of course that water will boil quicker because you'd get more energy to it in a shorter time. So power is energy per second. Energy, energy per second. So in one second, how much energy are you giving that water? If, for example, I started off with 100 joules every second, then it might boil after two minutes. If I gave it 200 joules every second, per second, per second, that might boil only after one minute. So the more powerful the kettle, the more energy gets uh, delivered to it every single second, and therefore the water boils quicker. So the unit for 
uh, power is watts. What's the unit for power? So we could say that's 100, 100 watts. And this would be 200 watts, exactly the same as 200 joules per second. If you had a more powerful car, that's exactly the same principle. If you have a more powerful car, power is energy per second. Every single second, your car gives more energy or has more energy, transfers more energy per second, and therefore you've got a more powerful car. It will do the same. It will do the same journey in a shorter time, because every second you gave it more energy, therefore it went faster, and therefore you'd get there quicker. So more powerful kettle boils water quicker. And more powerful car will do your journey in a quicker time because every second you're transferring more energy. Here are the equations we need to look at. You will need to memorize all of them. They're all equations for power. So the first one we're looking at is uh, power is current times potential difference. P equals IV. You need to know this one. You need to memorize it. If you want to pause the video, you can try and practice writing it down. P equals IV. The second one, P equals I squared R. That's another one you've got to memorize. P equals I squared R. So that's current squared times resistance. And the last one we've kind of looked at, power is energy divided by time, energy per second. If you want to pause the video, you can have a go at these questions and then check with my answers. In the description of the, um, the video, there's the same worksheet which you used before. The second half of it is on power. There are still three sections, the answer at the bottom, so have a look at the way I lay mine out and then have a go as many questions as you can do. They start off easier and get progressively harder. You can do as many as you can and check your answers at the bottom. We're going to start with question number one. And we're going to lay it out exactly as we lay out every equation. A bulb has a current of four amps. So therefore current is four amps. I is the symbol for current, I think it's a French word, and amps is the correct unit, so that's good, and a potential difference of 30 volts, so V is 30 volts. What is the power of the bulb? What is the power of the bulb? P equals question mark. Draw a line. The equation from the previous slide we need, we've got I, we've got V, we're looking for power, P equals IV. Sub in the values you know. We do not know P, so I'm leaving that as P. I do know I. I is 4. Times by V, which is 30. And use a calculator if you wish. 4 times 30 is 120 watts. That means every single second, 120 joules is transferred. 120 joules per second or 120 watts. Uh, watts is written like this, by the way, it's spelt watts. Like uh, it's named after Mr. Watt. Question number two. Question number two. A heater has a current of two amps. So it's got a current of two amps. It's got a resistance of 10 ohms. Are these both the correct units? Amps and ohms. Yes. What is the power of the heater? P is question mark. Draw a line. Now I can't use the same equation. I don't have a V. So the other equation, the second one you had to memorize was this one. P equals I squared R. Plug in the values you know. I don't know P, so I leave it as P. I squared is 2 squared. Don't forget the squared. Times R, which is 10. 
If you want to use your calculator, you can see that uh, 2 squared is 4 times by 10. So therefore the power is 40 watts. That means every second, 40 joules of energy is transferred every second. Question number three. A kettle transfers 120,000 joules of energy. So therefore my energy is 120,000 joules. It's boiling for 60 seconds. So time is 60 seconds. Is that correct unit? Yes, time is always in seconds. What is the power of the kettle? So power is question mark, draw a line. Now I can't use that equation or that equation because I don't have a V and I don't have an R. I don't have potential difference or resistance. So the equation I'm going to use for this one is power is energy transferred divided by time. Power is energy per second. Plug in the values you know. Power is energy. So that number is 120,000 joules divided by time which is 60 seconds and now I've just got an equation I've got 120,000 divided by 60 use a calculator if you wish 120,000 divided by 60 the answer is 2,000 watts capital W that means there is 2,000 joules every second transferred to the kettle I'd say that's about typical for a kettle, about 2,000 watts or 2 kilowatts. Last question. Question four. A machine uses 400 kilojoules of energy. So E is 400 kilojoules of energy. Now alarm bells are ringing. 400 kilojoules is not the right units kilo is not correct it should just be joules now kilo means thousand like kilogram kilometer so i need to times that by a thousand so that is four hundred thousand joules and now it's in the right units in 24 hours hmm so time is 24 hours that is not the correct units so i'm going to times that by 60 to get minutes 24 hours times that by 60 and then I'm going to times that by 60 again and I'm going to get seconds it must be in seconds 86,400 seconds so that is the right units and that's the right units uh, what's the power of the machine so power is question mark draw a line now what equation am I going to use? I could use P equals IV, I could use P equals I squared R, or I could use E over T. Now I've got E and T and I'm looking for P so I'm going to use that one. So power is energy divided by time. So therefore P is energy E, which is 400 thousand joules divided by 86,400 seconds and I can just use my calculator for that 400,000 divided by 86,400 so we've got 400,000 divided by 86,400 the answer is 4.6. 4.6 watts, capital W. Very good. So we have got 400,000 joules in 86,000 seconds, or 4.6 joules every single second. If you want to, you can get 4.6 times that by 86,400 and you'll get the total energy used that day. So we've got 4.6 joules per second. And in a day, in a whole day, in 24 hours, it uses 400,000 joules of energy. 
Okay, if you pause the video, leave my workings on the board, have a go at your worksheet, do as many as you can. If you get stuck, you can send me an email um, with any questions you have.